Aqua Markers are a new product and I'm really not even sure if they're more marker or more watercolour because they work so beautifully either way. This is an original illustration that I'm working on at the beach. On the left hand side you can see where I've done some tests with the aqua markers just to see what they're like in their pure unadulterated <laughs> pre-watered phase. The colours are really really juicy and then I'm using the colours on top of my sketch. I haven't prepared the paper in any special way and the sketch was made with a Colorase pencil. Uh, graphite is water soluble and lifts whereas the Colorase is an, actually a black coloured pencil and it doesn't lift so it isn't as messy, uh, stays a bit cleaner and is very very nice to draw with. So I'm starting by laying down some of the lighter uh, colours. Um, maybe not necessarily what you would consider skin tone colours. But because I know this is watercolour and I'm building up uh, the face, the shadow side and the side where the light is hitting it, I'm having my fun playing. The lovely thing about these markers is that they blend as you're working with them. Uh, but not over dramatically. Uh, so it gives you a little bit of control over watercolour. And the whole thing with watercolour is there is very little control. But for once, I have a little bit of control. The other wonderful thing about watercolour in general is that it is actually very, very forgiving. And you end up with happy mistakes all the time. Uh, and if you put something in the wrong spot, it's very easy to add water and erase it, basically. And the same things happen with these markers. There's a colourless blender, which I use as an eraser if I've done something wrong, as well as using it to actually blend the colours one into the other. So what I'm using as a shadow colour is a combination of the yellow and purple. And yellow and purple are complementary. So they make each other appear brighter, more vivid when they're next to each other. But when they're overlapped and in a watercolour situation, they will mix and they will create the perfect shadow colour. That complementary shadow hue that looks fantastic with the purple and the yellow. So I'm using those colours to do the work for me. I'm letting colour science work. Uh, I'm also having no idea <laughs> what really I'm going to be doing at any point in time because I'm playing. I'm mucking around in my journal and, uh, you know, although I love this uh, drawing, I have scanned it, so which, as, which is what I do with most of my work if I like the drawing, so that then I feel free to ruin it if need be playing around, experimenting. But you know what? That doesn't happen very often because everything is salvageable. <laughs> so I'm just adding layers, adding layers. I tend to start with the face as I've done here. Uh, then when I get a little bit um, of a, you know, on a bit of a roll, I then usually actually transfer to the rest of the body, do a little bit of that. While I let my brain and my creative muse mull over what I'm going to be doing next before I get too bogged down uh, in the face. And then I try and space out, um, you know, doing the clothes, which for me isn't that exciting in this instance because uh, there aren't very many clothes on this little naughty fairy. Um, and then I'm rewarding myself basically by painting the face and I always leave the eyes to last because it's kind of a reward it's sort of you know letting me building up to that so I think I'm just going to play some music and let you enjoy the rest of this uh, illustration coming together and I can't wait to scan her again and then use this illustration in something else in maybe in my journals maybe in some other mixed media um, but 
Yes, I really, really like this, um, the, the finished result at the very end. Enjoy. Thank you.